Hello, uh, I'm Dr. Ed Prochownik of the Division of Hematology Oncology at Children's Hospital of Pittsburgh, and I'm the Paul C. Gaffney Professor of Pediatrics, as well as Professor of Microbiology and Molecular Genetics at UPMC and the University of Pittsburgh. So I'd like to discuss with you today some uh, recent results that we've um, just published in a journal uh, called Stem Cells that um, uh, represent some new findings in the area of cancer stem cells. Let me explain a little bit about what cancer stem cells really are. Um, unlike the old idea that uh, cancer cells were a very homogeneous population, over the last five years or so, um, many investigators have come to realize that, in fact, many tumors, if not all, uh, are really comprised of at least two distinct populations of cells one of which is a minority population of cells known as cancer stem cells. The bulk of tumors are comprised of non-stem cells and contrary to what had previously been thought, these cells actually have a very finite lifespan and they will eventually die. Um, on the other hand, the cancer stem cells are immortal and they will grow. They can either reproduce themselves and give rise to more cancer stem cells or they can differentiate into the non-stem cells with a very high but very limited proliferative capacity. The other thing that's been realized recently is that the cancer stem cell population tends to be quite refractory to traditional forms of chemotherapy and radiation therapy. So that when we treat patients with most of the chemotherapeutic drugs or radiation therapy that we use, what we'll generally see is shrinkage of the tumor, which leads you to believe that you are affecting a cure, but in fact what's really responding is the non-cancer stem cell population, leaving behind the stem cell population. And unless you're very lucky at eradicating that cancer stem cell population, it will eventually come back and grow and give rise to what we call a relapse, which is the most common cause of death in patients with cancer, relapse with cells that are now refractory to uh, chemotherapy. So there's been a tremendous amount of interest in the cancer stem cell hypothesis and particularly in trying, a, uh, trying to um, obtain populations of stem cells that could be studied in the test tube and perhaps used as um, uh, a means of identifying new agents or drugs that uh, would selectively kill the stem cell population. Now one of the problems with isolating uh, cancer stem cells is, number one, as I mentioned earlier, their uh, relatively uh, uh, relative non-abundance in tumors. Uh, but more importantly is that as soon as you isolate cancer stem cells, they begin to differentiate into the non-stem cell components. So trying to isolate populations of cells that are um, homogeneous and maintain their non-differentiated stem cell-like properties uh, is very difficult to do and uh, it's, it really becomes a moving target. So it would be uh, a tremendous benefit to be able to somehow um, freeze or block or prevent the differentiation of cancer stem cells so that they could be expanded indefinitely, studied at our leisure, uh, which would allow us then to identify new agents. So uh, in the paper that we've recently published, we have in fact um, quite by accident, I should, I should say, um, identified a way for freezing the stem cell populations in breast cancer. Uh, we did this in four uh, different populations of uh, four distinct cell lines of uh, breast cancer, and we have characterized those lines, and we have shown that we are able to isolate and maintain the stem cell populations in their undifferentiated state. In fact, we can re-inoculate these cells into um, mice that are capable of growing these tumors and when we isolate the tumors from these animals the tumors are comprised exclusively of stem cells uh, thereby proving that uh, either under culture conditions in the test tube or in live animals we can maintain these cells in an undifferentiated state. So um, this is important because what this has now allowed us to do is to begin to use these cell lines as a means of screening literally thousands of drugs, um, some of which had been previously used for uh, cancer chemotherapy, some of which have never been used for cancer chemotherapy, some of which have no use, no known use um, up until this point. Uh, and by screening thousands of drugs, uh, we have in fact so far been able to identify several which seem to be very promising in terms of their ability to selectively kill the stem cell population. And we're hoping over the course of the next 
months to years to be able to further characterize the response of these stem cells to these compounds and hopefully be able to take these new drugs, new compounds, develop them into drugs that could actually be used to benefit the patient.